Hey guys, so last time we talked about discrete random variables, so those are variables that are broken down into chunks. Now we're going to move on to continuous random variables, so let's go ahead and get started. So, probability density curves. So continuous variables are quantitative variables that cannot be broken down into chunks, essentially, right? So before, remember things like um, the number of babies that you have, a lot of counting, a lot of those things that are measured through counting, that's completely different. Those are broken down into chunks because, for example, you can't have 1.2 babies, but you can have one or two. Now, continuous random variables, you can have these smaller discrete chunks. So we have anything that's measured. So weights, for example, even though you may weigh 120 pounds, you could, if you want to get very exact, you could be weighing 120.2795 pounds, right? Same thing with volume. For example, ounces or amount of weight and things like that, the money, time, anything that can be broken down into an infinite amount of discrete chunks within an interval, that's what's considered a continuous random variable. So now, as a discrete random variable gets broken down to smaller and smaller chunks, so this is kind of showing you how we go from discrete to continuous. So for example, something that's super discrete, maybe it could be number of kids, right? Here we have a histogram with very discrete chunks of observations. And then as we get more and more continuous, so for example, something can get broken down into more and more chunks, it starts kind of looking like this really smooth curve. And this one's here what's, what's considered the probability density curve, and this is for continuous random variables. So when a variable is continuous, the smooth curve associated with it is called density curve. And as you get into smaller and smaller chunks, I just said that it begins to look smooth. So the area under this density curve is the probability of any particular event, right? So for example, with the discrete random variables, so the two on the left, even though we have a bunch of different chunks, all those probabilities should add up to what? So all of this should add up to 100%, right? Again, even though it's broken down into smaller chunks, they still add up to 100%. Because basically, discrete random variables, remember, those are all the possible outcomes. And so the probability associated with each of those outcomes should be between 0 and 1. But once we add everything up, that's all the outcomes within a particular uh, situation. So let's consider our sample space. And our sample space, again, the probability of all those outcomes is just 100% or 1. So now. The density curve, kind of similar to the histogram, you saw that the, the size of the bars are representative of the probability. Now here, now that it's smooth, basically the area under the curve represents probability. So what does that all mean? It means that this whole area here is 100%. And so this is assuming that it goes, it takes the span of the whole curve, right? So everything under the curve is 100%. And then this is a probability, let's say this is 5, right? This is the probability that x is greater than or equal to 5. And that would be our event. Our event would be, if we want to say, here's this number 5, what's the probability of finding something with a 5 or higher? So for example, height, right? It could be 5 feet, whatever the case may be. Here's this number 5, what's the probability of finding that number or greater? That's the event that we're talking about. And the probability associated with that event is literally this area here. So that little area, the blue area, is the probability of that event happening. And I know it's a strange concept, but let's go ahead and move on to one particular type of continuous variable, and that is the uniform. So two key characteristics of the continuous distribution are their specific interval of possibilities. And so this one here is the uniform. And the reason why it's uniform is because all intervals in this distribution are equally probable. Right? And so the probability of any particular event within this um, within this curve is basically given by little chunks of probabilities that are all equally probable. And so we're gonna do a couple practice problems so that we can see how this all works. So earlier we said that the probability is simply the area under the curve. So if this whole thing is supposed to be one right so this cool guy is supposed to be one right so the probability associated with any particular um, any particular outcome is then one divided by the size of the interval itself so this is going to be a and this will be B and the reason for that is because if we want to know 
basically the height of this rectangle, right? We have the area should be one. We have the length, right? And so to get the height, all you have to do is just one divided by that because area of a rectangle equals length times, I'm gonna say height. Even though it's length times width normally, height is kind of what we're looking at here. So if the area is supposed to be one, equals the length, the length is basically the interval B minus A, right? Because we want to see how far that length is. So here's B, let's say that was 10. Here's A, let's say that was five. Our length would be five. And then times the height, that's actually the probability of any particular event, right? So then we end up with this formula here. Once we do a little algebra, divide by b minus a, and so we get the probability of any particular outcome within this, un this uniform distribution is just one divided by how wide this interval is, right? So let's go ahead and apply this real quick and kind of see how it all works. So iPhones are expected to have a battery life between 10 and 16 hours, again, totally made up. Um, assuming that there is an equal chance that an iPhone's battery life is somewhere between this interval, right? So it's equally probable that you get an iPhone within this interval of 10 to 16 hours. What is the probability that you purchase an iPhone with 14 hours of battery life? So what we have is this uniform distribution, right? And what's our interval? Our interval for this one is 10 hours to 16 hours. And this is all considered battery life. Right, so 10 to 16 hours and all of those numbers are representative of battery lives. And we know that it's only between 10 and 16 because they just tell us that, right? So again, I made these numbers up, but it's fine. So what's the probability you purchase an iPhone with 14 hours of battery life? So here we're looking at one particular outcome, right? Not an event, right? The event could maybe be between 14 and 16 hours or something like that. But here we're just focusing on one particular outcome. So to get the probability of any single outcome within this uh, uniform distribution, so probability that our battery life is 14, and I say x as in our variable of interest. So I could have switched x for battery life, or number of hours that your iPhone stays alive. That's fine, but just in general, x is kind of like here's this um, here's this variable that we're interested in, whatever it may represent. So here's a probability that our number of hours or our battery life is 14, right? And that's going to be for any particular instance. All it really is is one divided by how wide that interval is that we're talking about. So our interval, our full interval in this situation, is between what two hours? 10 is 16, right? So our B is 16, and our A is 10 in this case. And so it's basically 1 6 or 0.1667, right? And so the probability of us getting any iPhone that's exactly 14 hours of battery life is about a 16.67% chance. But in statistics, again, probabilities aren't represented by percentages. We use decimals. Cool. So that's for one particular iPhone that uh, has a battery life of 14 hours. But now, referring back to example one, what's the probability to purchase an iPhone with a battery life between 12 and 16 hours? So between 12 and 16, let's go ahead and redraw this distribution here. Right, and so here's 10 hours of battery life, here's 16, but we want 12 to 14. And so that's the, now we're not looking at just one particular outcome, we're looking at an event now. And what's that event? It's the area, the probability of that event is the area between 12 and 14 within that, underneath that curve, right? And so the probability is supposed to be area What's the area of that little chunk right there? So the probability that we have 12 hours to 14 hours of battery life. And that's basically how you represent that. X is between 12 
and 14 hours. That's all it's basically saying. So the probability that your number of battery life hours is between 12 and 14 is again just the area associated with that, right? So the area between 12 and 14 underneath that continuous curve is just the area of a rectangle, right? And so we have our length is what? Our length is 2, right? And then what's our height? We found the probability associated with any individual outcome, right? And again, for a uniform distribution, it should be the same across all of them, right? So that height right there is the probability, which we found was 0.1667, right? So we found the height in this one up here earlier. That's the probability for any one particular outcome. But again, it's the same for all of them. That's why you have this kind of plateau. It just stays constant for all of the outcomes. But now for an event, it's the probability of any one of those outcomes times what's the interval that you're focusing on now. Does that make sense? So we have a height of 0.1667 because that's the probability of any one individual outcome. And then what's the interval that we're looking at? Between 12 and 14. So we end up getting length times height, which is basically our length is 2 hours because we want that 2 hour interval between 12 and 14. And we also want the probability associated with each of those. And that's 0.1667. So we end up getting 0.3333. So it's about a 33.33% chance that we end up getting an iPhone between 12 to 14 hours. How did we find that? We first had to find what's the probability of one individual iPhone being 14 hours exactly. So that's why we did this first step up here to find the probability associated with each outcome. So now we get that probability associated with each outcome again the height, right? The height of any rectangle within this interval. And now we can say for what's the probability of getting an iPhone between 12 to 14 hours? Now it's that height that we found the probability of each individual outcome times what's the interval that I'm focusing on. Does that make sense? And again, it's just an area. So it's a weird concept that the area underneath this curve is a probability, but that's how it works. So that's about it for these examples. Let's go ahead and move on to some practice problems.